Hello again. This is John from 58 North. Doing a little bit of astronomy from the shed. Well, hopefully, anyway. It's quite a good sky tonight. Uh, I'm just trying to get his calibration done on PhD the now, which isn't very successful for some reason. It keeps failing the calibration. It just keeps saying the star won't move enough. So we'll see how it goes. So I've just had to uh, restore a previous calibration. Excuse me. And uh, we'll see how it goes at that. Oh dear, you're on it already. It's back 11 at night and it's only really just started to get dark enough recently. Uh, I have done a... Oh, so I've done a calibration there from a previous one. We'll see how that how it guides. I've done an autofocus. Uh, I think I may even try... A, I'll set to check the polar alignment, see how that goes. And after that, we'll try and find a target in the sky and start imaging. Uh, I'm choked with a cold now as well. I've got a really sore throat, so I don't know how this is going to sound on video. I sound pretty rough. Uh, but yeah, we'll give it a go. And let's see if we can. What we can do. Hmm. Going to stop this now because the guiding is just ridiculously bad for some reason. Uh, I'll put it back to bin two, which is what I originally had it on. See if it makes any difference whatsoever. Uh, I'm not even going to do another uh, calibration. Review calibration data. It. Let's stop that the now. Uh, restore calibration data. Restore. Let's see what happens this time. Right, clear that. Yep. Uh, okay, okay. Keep getting these messages all the time for PhD now. Clear that. Clear that. Right, in the meantime, let's look for an object. Uh, I think I've got something loaded up in framing actually. I was going to do. Oh, it's called Markarian's Chain, I think it's called. So let's maybe try and do a slew and centre for that. And uh, yeah, see how it goes. And uh, yeah, since it's galaxy season, may as well try and take some images of galaxies. Uh, there's not much nebula in the sky there now. Oh dear, I can't be yawning yet. It's only I've only just started. Some nebula coming up later in the early in the morning, but I don't know if I'll be up and around for that. I do have work tomorrow up early again as usual, so we shall see. I 
motion detection off for the camera. That's well. I don't know if it's such a good idea to be set up in the shed tonight, but take the, the image when I can do it, I suppose. Uh, well, let's see how this is going to turn out. Re slowing to target again. It usually does it within two goals, but it's going to do it a third time now. Hopefully this should be it. Bang on. So yes, it's been a while since I've been out with the telescope and taking images. The weather's just been absolutely terrible. It's been a really poor winter for... Excuse me! Oh my goodness! It's been a really poor winter for imaging. There's just been storm after storm and rain and cloud and winds. And now it's getting... Now it's the start of May. It's really it's two months to to midsummer, and uh, at this latitude at 58 degrees, it really only gets dark about 11 o'clock, and it's going to be it's going to be light again at four in the morning. So getting very little in the way of darkness. Why is it saying PhD is calibrating? Why is it doing that? I don't know why it's keeping jumping back to calibration when I've set it to... to restore the calibration. I don't understand. There's something strange going on with things tonight. For some reason, PhD2 is just not playing the game at all. Right, stop that. Just start that. Right, we don't want it to do that. Hey, modify calibration, restore calibration, restore. Just start guiding, please. I've got a feeling that there's something wrong and it's just not guiding at all. Like it's not even connected to the mount. Because these numbers, it was up like, like 18. And it's like, well, it's obviously something wrong here. Hmm. Well, we'll try this. Start guiding, yes, come on. <sighs> Nothing's really working particularly smoothly tonight like it used to, for some reason. I don't know. <sighs> guiding not settled yet, okay. Imaging. Let's see. Let's take a let's take a a three minute. Yeah, go for three minutes. A save is on just for a snapshot. Let's see what it's going to do. <clears throat> See what the focus is going to be like and the framing and whatnot. 
Hey, where are all the luminances? In the meantime, I'll start the cooling of the camera as well. And if all going well, and if the guiding calms down a bit and actually works as it should, and everything else starts working as it should, then I'll put this into a sequence, I think. The framing's not too bad, I don't think. Hey, is it quite accurate as to what we're seeing? Reasonably. Uh, of course, I mean, I've, I didn't even bother doing a rotation or anything. I don't even really know which way the camera's. Uh, should we try something like that? I've got one of our cats just jumped up. If he pulls a USB cable out, then we're in big trouble. That's Boris, one of our one of our five cats. Hey, Boris. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so at the moment we'll let take this exposure and then I may see if I can readjust the, the frame into what I've just set it to here try and get some more galaxies in try and get as many as possible in the field of view it's oh I'm sorry I'm so tired already working all day and Messing them out after work, getting everything set up, just for things to not particularly work very well. Anyway, let's see how this exposure is going to turn out. That's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad at all. It's quite nicely framed, I think. I think I quite like that. Back to the framing assistant. I'm just trying to work out what I'm looking at here. Uh, right, I think to be honest we'll just leave it as is. Quite like the way it is in there. I target the sequence. We set up a little sequencer and see how it goes from there. Hey, what do we want to do? Seconds filter. Well, opening to dither on. How many shall we do then? No, we just go for three minutes times five. Just go for five the now and see how it goes. And we can always duplicate it again if it's going to be okay. Uh, I don't 
around two, three, four, five, sorry. Take that one away. And this will be red, green, and blue. LRGB, okay. Hey, I think we're all about ready, really, then. This will take us up to half past twelve. And, uh, the Kaiden is just ridiculously bad, though. Why is it so bad? What's happened to the scale as well? what's going on tonight. What I'm going to do is stop that then now. I'm going to disconnect everything. Disconnect, disconnect. Definitely on the right camera. Camera mode. Shoot, sure, but it has to be an eight bit. Pick a star, start guiding and see what happens. I mean it's such a, well I'm saying it's such a clear night, I should really look outside make sure it's no one cloudy or anything actually. Uh, I might just do that just to double check the sky in case I'm thinking there's something badly wrong and it's just the sky is rubbish. Right, do you know what? Let's just start this. Go back to imaging. <clears throat> Camera is down to minus seven point three. I'm going to set it to minus ten. I've just started this sequence now because honestly, I'm so pushed for time as it is. Even I mean, doing an hour's worth of. Hey, I imagine it's going to take me up to half twelve by the time I get packed up and all the rest. Of it. it could easily be one o'clock, and it would be great to sit up all night, but. When I'm back out of bed at half seven in the morning for work, it's like I do need to get some sleep, unfortunately. 
Why can we never get clear nights, Friday nights or Saturday nights when I'm not working the weekend? I don't know. Do not know. Right. I'll let it do its thing now, and what I'm going to do, I think, is go and grab a quick cup of tea, and I shall be back, and I'll get a quick look at the sky when I'm out, and make sure it's still looking okay. See you in a few minutes. <laughs>
back again well, as you can see <clears throat> but I'm on, after looking outside I'm not surprised the guidance not been too good the sky is actually quite hazy because it's, it's, it's a clear sky if you like and there's a few stars to see there's not that many there must be sort of higher up cloud there's certainly no low cloud but there must definitely be sort of medium to high cloud because it's I was expecting it to be a lot clearer than it was so the images that we're getting here the now uh, yeah I think it's the best it's going to be it just even on the screen it just looked not as much as blurry but it's just slightly just yeah hazy looking which is a real shame because it is a really nice clear night and before it got dark I mean the sky was just a lovely blue not a cloud to see in the sky but uh, in all fairness it's not even completely dark dark and that's 25 to 12 there's a very a very sort of, I don't know it's just it's not black it's it's more I don't know getting on for dark blue towards the horizon towards the the west anyway it's not completely dark so yeah I think it's just going to have to make do with what we get tonight it's never going to be great but let's just hope after once we can stack some images together uh, we can get some sort of reasonable image but these galaxies they just look really blown out already it's just bright white Hmm, I don't know how much detail we're going to get in this, but you can only try, I suppose. At least it's quite warm outside. I think it's, I'm not even going to mess about with the laptop too much because it's, eh, it's not the most powerful of laptops. And it's pretty old, and if I skip around programs too much and this and that, it tends to, it tends to slow it right down and end up getting not responding and so uh, when it's all working I tend to just just leave it alone to be honest right the camera temperature is down to minus 10 we're on the second luminance exposure oh I really need to stop yawning I have to edit all these videos right down <clears throat> I don't even know how much more I can be speaking tonight. My throat is absolutely it's on fire. It's so sore. So this probably wasn't the best night to be even recording a video for for YouTube. Mm, satellite trail already in that one. In fact, let's just zoom in a little bit and have a look. Yeah. See a wee bit of detail in that galaxy. It's the stars are looking quite round. I mean the guidance has settled the 1.13. I mean it's it's not brilliant obviously, but uh, considering that actually the haziness of the sky and how <coughs> yeah, how not very clear it is. Uh, that's not too bad. You can see a little bit of detail in some of them, I suppose, so far. It'd be great to have uh, get a good few hours on this and uh, in real good sky conditions and <coughs> the amount of galaxies you'd be able to see in a single image would be quite quite something, eh? <coughs> <coughs>
get a bit of an image of the <coughs> the scope as well. It's quite well, it's, it's not zoomed in. The camera's actually really close to the scope. I need to get it mounted a bit further back someplace. Uh, which wouldn't be wrong, wouldn't be a bad thing. Just try to get a slightly better view, if possible. It is what it is. It's a telescope point in the sky, I suppose. I did have the scope mounted on the garden shed outside, which was pointing towards the observatory. But uh, when the roofs sort of slide back, uh, all you can really see is a sliding roof. You can't actually see inside. So I've moved the camera to inside the observatory, but it's a real small observatory. It's only big enough for the telescope. Hey, I'm sitting in a shed, sitting in a shed, a lean-to shed, uh, in the garden, uh, and the telescope's maybe, I don't know, 12 feet away or something. <laughs> so from where I'm sitting now, so yeah, I'll need to try and spend a bit of time and get a get the camera mounted someplace better, a wee bit further back so you can get a more overall view of what's going on with the scope and uh, it's handy for me certainly. I can, I'm looking at it on my, on my phone on full screen and uh, it's good just to see that it's not clattering off anything when I'm slowing and it's slowing in the right direction and I can keep an eye that none of the cables are getting tangled in anything so it's uh, it's quite handy for sort of the safety aspect having the camera inside and I just really stuck the, the feed onto the onto the screen as well just for just so you could see it or just so anyone could see it but uh, things to do for for next season uh, the observatory is not even completely finished I've only I only started building it I don't know tail end of summer last year and uh, it's just been working at weekends and nights after work, just doing a wee bit of work here and there. But yeah, so so hand built by myself. And I say just a quite a small thing, it's big enough that I can get inside it just to walk around about the scope to to set it all up and do maintenance and adjustments and whatnot, and slide two halves of the roof back. I say it's a. I'll need to get some pictures uh, once the observatory is actually completely finished. I'll, uh, I'll take some pictures and stick it on YouTube as well. But it is a, it's a roll off roof, but the the roof split in two, and uh, the two halves go opposite directions, rolling off. And it's uh, I've made it a hexagonal shape, as as close to a, a circular sort of dome shape as I could as I could make it of timber myself. So I went for a hexagon. In fact, no, I'm talking nonsense. I didn't go for a hexagon. I went for an octagon. I went and made it eight sides, not six. So yes, <coughs> an eight-sided shed basically with a with a roll-off roof. Uh, it's been absolutely great for. I mean, tonight it's just a case I switch the power off, uh, pull the two halves of the roof back, a couple of clamps inside, some quick-release clamps, clamp it together, walk back out, shut the door, and in the house and away to bed. There is no more messing about dismantling scopes and mounts and cables and or at best having to cover everything up in the dark and blankets over things to keep the frost off and then eh, waterproof sheeting and whatnot just in case it does rain or whatnot and then you're always scared if the wind picks up is it going to blow over so eh, because the winds up here can be pretty fierce and they just come from nowhere so yeah to have it actually protected in a and its own little building is absolutely fantastic. 
uh, saves so much time setting up and especially for the taking down at nights and yeah it's all on its own concrete pier as well I've done, all, done all the work myself so yeah absolutely solid and uh, yeah see once it's all completely finished I'll get it all done over the summer I want to get the whole thing prepared 100% ready for the upcoming winter astral season and uh, yeah I quite like sitting in the shed at least uh, quite close to the scope and uh, yeah when on good clear nights I tend to just go outside anyway and just have a look under the stars and just just stand around have a good look outside I didn't want it to be completely automated where I'm just sitting in the house and work everything from the computer I quite like actually still being outside and uh, yeah sitting in the wee shed in the garden here is quite nice I've got a wee corner of the shed anyway the little pot and shed made myself a wee desk here for the computer and I've, I've run the USB and the power cables from the shed underground and conjure it into the into the observatory so yeah, yeah. it's a it's a good thing that's for sure what we moved on to now we're on red See how this turns out. <coughs> oh well, the first five five exposures done. <coughs> Guidance actually settled quite nicely. I'll say that. I'll go through the roof. Sitting just over one point well, one point zero eight. Tell you for the sky conditions tonight. That's not bad. Image history. Right. What's the HFR like? Four, three, four, 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 three, four, six, four, five, four, five. They're all pretty close to HFRs, which is good. At least there's not too much of a variation in things. I've not even had a sip of it yet. But oh, I might just stay up for it. I might just do the hours, imaging, and then back up. If I felt better and I was choked with the cold and whatnot, I'd maybe do another hour and stay up to half one. And just, uh, just have a real late night. But oh, I just feel absolutely terrible as it is. Obviously not that terrible that I have to be in my bed or anything ill, but I just don't feel great. So, but I've got the wee heater beside me as well, keeping me warm. It would be warmer if I could shut the door, but uh, the amount of cats that we've got that keep coming in and out, in and out, and as soon as you shut the door, they're at the door wanting in, it's easier just leaving the door open, letting them come in and out. Nice week of a deal. And I may as well have a biscuit to go with it.
Another red exposure just about to come through. <clears throat> Another satellite. Every time you go out, it's just satellite after satellite going through images, isn't it? It's just it's probably the same for everyone on this planet now. It's just ridiculous. software and whatnot will be able to remove the satellites. I'm sure it would do a better job if I'm, when I use a sort of better software. I'm using what am I using now? I'm using Cyril now just because it's free. But I used to have the trial version of Astro Pixel Processor and it was really good. I really liked that. So I might just eventually go back to that and just buy the Buy that again and uh, use that. Uh, I quite like the simplicity. I know a lot of people use uh, other software for stacking and processing and whatnot, but uh, I quite like APB. I just found it good results and it seems quite simple to use. A lot of noise outside. It sounds like a cat on the roof. I certainly hope it is. Should really go and have a look. <clears throat> but I, I might just not, I might end up just not saying an awful lot for now because I'm really struggling to speak. This probably isn't going to be the best video for YouTube to be honest. A lot has went wrong so far. A lot of stuff that I've not even recorded because it's taken me so long just to get PhD to actually work to some extent that is actually guiding. I don't know what's going on. And the computer itself was going really slow. I had to actually just uh, I was I was using Stellarium as well. And honestly it just just kept freezing up on me all the time so I managed I managed to uh, shut down Stellarium and it seems to have helped the PC a bit. But uh, the laptop but running OBS and recording everything and having the webcam here and the webcam outside and the main imaging camera and the guide camera I think it's too much for the, the poor old laptop it's, uh, it's on the verge of breaking down every time I, I do this I think yeah I'm just quite actually, just quite happy to actually see something on the screen that that resembles a <coughs> a chain of galaxies. Oh dear me! I should just play some soothing music and uh, stop talking. John. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. Oh, dear me. getting through the exposures on four or five of red we we'll should be halfway through already it's amazing when you're just sitting here just staring at a screen how time flies I've seen myself in some really good clear nights just staying up all night and yeah four or five hours I imagine just sitting here in the corner of our shed in the garden looking at Nina at the screen and <clears throat> yeah it's amazing think time goes in I prefer it sitting in the shed I used to sit outside at the telescope I say when it was just well even a couple of years ago when I just had it on a tripod in the garden and a deck chair sitting beside it and blankets and freezing cold uh, yeah they were they were cold nights Maybe just getting, I don't know, used to used to being warm. Maybe just getting old. I don't want to sit outside in the cold anymore. I quite like sitting in a more comfortable seat, which is something I need to get because this seat is not comfortable. It's hard wooden seat and to get a nice comfy office chair. Eh, put the feet up. But yeah. Happy memories of sitting in the garden on a deck chair beside the scope, just looking at the sky. <coughs> but yeah, it was cold. February, February nights, like minus eight, minus ten. Oh my word, it was cold. Numb feet. Oh. I don't think I'll be going back to that again. Well, hence an observatory to keep the scope covered and a little shed here to keep me covered. Here's a bramble though. Got one little cat in for company. He's out of... Here's a bramble. He's just out of view. Hey, yes. Even though it's quite a sort of mild, summery type night, it's still, you still feel a bit of a chill when you're just sitting. I should really have done a, I think maybe I had autofocus as well on filter change, but I completely forgot to put that in the sequence. And it's really just going to be a bit of a quick one tonight anyway, so I'm not overly fussed, it looks okay. Yes. 
fact, this is the equipment that I'm using. Uh, one heck of a noise outside. There's cats jumping about the roof of this shed and climbing up the fence up the side of the shed here. What a noise. So yeah, that's all the equipment, well, sort of not all the equipment, but the sort of main equipment that I'm using tonight, well, use every night because it's all I've got. I've only got one set up, one scope, one mount, hey, one everything. I've not got the luxury of having different setups and wide field and monochrome camera and colour camera and all that. I've just got a, uh, I've got what I can afford and this is what I can afford. <clears throat> It's taken a lot of years to sort of build up the, uh, the equipment. It's my very first uh, sort of go-to telescope. I've had it for probably six years or so now. Uh, and it's been a CPC, it comes in the 4 cam. And I actually got the wedge at the same time. It was part of, part of a sort of package deal at the time that I bought it. Uh, so yeah, I've used it. So yeah, it's my one and only sort of go-to telescope. I quite like the scope. The mount, the mount's given me not problems, but it's been a uh, yeah, it's maybe not the most the best for guiding and whatnot. But uh, it does a job. I'm quite sure an equatorial mount would be maybe give me slightly better results. Well. I'd hope more than slightly better results, but eh, it is what it is, and it's what I've got, and it's what I use, so I'm happy at that. It's a, I quite like the camera, the 294mm Pro, it's been really good. And eh, I'm using the Celestron off axis eh, guider with a ZWO. 174mm mini guide camera seems like quite a good combination although well, you wouldn't really think so the night with the guiding but I've had it I've had it well below uh, one arc minutes and uh, yeah for autofocus I'm using the Pegasus Focus Cube Zero which again seems to do quite a good quite a good job but anyway I think we can get rid of that I just seen it but I seen another two satellites in that one oh my word it's like every other second frame's got a satellite trail going through it I'm just going to quickly pop outside, get a quick look at the sky and see what these cats are up to. Back in a minute. What are they doing?
what they're doing. Yes. As predicted, all the cats outside, surrounded by five cats there on the roof, on the fence, running about. They just love it at night time, especially when there's someone out and about. They're just, uh, just curious. Right. On the green now, halfway through. The sky's looking slightly better actually, it's not looking quite as hazy as it was earlier. And to be honest, I can sort of see that in images. For my eyes here, you probably maybe they're not going to see that one through YouTube, but uh, certainly that last image looked so. I know it's, it was green, but you'd expect the luminance to be clearest to all the colours. Uh, it just looks a bit more in focus than it did before. There was the slight haziness seems to be going. It's obviously just been sort of medium to high clouds that must have drifted over because the sky's looking. It's looking a lot better than it was earlier, and it has noticeably got darker as well, which is helping the helping the images. It's, it's lost that blue hue to the sky. It's more just it's just black now. But I mean, it is after midnight, so oh. to Alpha. <clears throat> Jeff, I was coming down. Much the same, really. Four forty, four five, four six. Yeah, they're all between four four zero. I think is the lowest, and then the highest has been four six seven. But it's been about four, 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 five, generally. They're all really close to each other. The half flux radius. At least I'm getting consistency. The guidance has been staying pretty much, pretty much the same, really. Hover them just over the one. Drastically. So far, anyway. Uh -huh. Yes. So what else to be saying, really? No, no. Should really just be quiet then now and just let the throat just let the throat heal a bit. Oh dear. Zoom in a little bit on the green. See what the stars are looking like.
Nice and round. Get a wee bit of detail in the galaxy. I'll be interested in when these are stacked together with the colours and see what it actually looks like. It's a target I've never taken an image of before. It's a I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right, I'm going to say Markarian's chain. I could be pronouncing that wrong because I've got nothing in front of me showing me actually how it's spelled and I've not got to layer them up anymore. Yeah, interesting though. I think the part of the chain, oh god, another satellite that I've taken is. Oh, I'm sure these are called the eyes. My goodness, these satellites are just ridiculous. I mean, the chain's really big. You really need a, a wide field setup to get lots of the galaxies in. Uh, with 8 inch SCT, it's quite a. quite a narrow field of view. <coughs> I was actually quite. Quite happy when I framed it up in Stellarium that uh, it was showing me I was going to get as many galaxies as, as what I'm getting in it. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure oh, I was going to point it there. My fingers like pretty sure these are called uh, these two on the left here are called the eyes. I could be wrong again. I'm just from from memory, which uh, memory is not the best. And. Uh, Yeah, I wonder if I can put annotations on from here. I can never remember what these all are. There's, there'll be a set in some place for I annotate it. about in settings and now when it's it's all doing stuff but uh, yeah once I make this video I'll uh, I'll reference all the galaxies all the main galaxies that I can see in this and uh, see how far away they are I should have had my book I've got a little uh, little reference book as well but I think I left it in the house I should have had that with me so I could be reading through that and uh, it would have given me the, the numbers and some uh, information on the what I'm actually looking at. I need to remember to bring the bring the wee book out. <coughs> uh, I'd imagine they're gonna be a few good few million light years away anyway. I never really used to like imaging galaxies, I was always doing nebula because I loved all the big colours and just yeah, the weird and wonderful shapes but if, the last year or so I've really got into doing galaxies, uh, just find them fascinating. Yeah, like, gee, went into the blue already, I don't know, I took an image of the needle galaxy maybe two years ago now and it turned out so well it was such a lovely object and I've done the crow and the, the crow the crowbar and the whale and uh, yeah they were just really really good I always thought galaxies were a bit boring and a bit small and apart from obviously the usual suspects like the the pinwheel and M51 the, the real big ones but uh, no I got a real good image M one oh six and uh, I'd really like to do that again. I think there's some lovely colours in it. And of course Andromeda. I've never I've not got a good image of Andromeda yet. I'll have to do a mosaic to get that in. Maybe even like a three panel mosaic at the minimum just to get the full thing in. It's so big, it just doesn't quite fit in the, the field of view of this scope. But uh, yeah, I quite like galaxies now. Something different. It's oh, excuse me. I find them quite interesting. 
<clears throat> but yeah, I think after this hour I'm going to have to pack up. My throat is killing me and I'm just... I'm getting really tired. There's about 15 minutes to go and I think we'll just call it quits for the night. And uh, I'll just stack the hours worth of images tomorrow, see how it's turned out. Oh dear me. Oh. But yeah, something different I've never done before. Oh my word, yet another satellite. This is just ridiculous. <sighs> Maybe it's just a bad bit of the sky you'd be looking at, I don't know. Some targets you go for, you don't, you hardly get any satellites going through. Another one's like tonight, it's just one after the other. Hello tiger. No I can't. Hello. You coming up? Hello tiger. You coming up? Come on then. Come on. He's an old cat tiger, he's like 18 this year I think. So we've got from about a year old to 18 years old and everything in between. We've got roughly 10 minutes or so, I think. And uh, that'll be an hour, an hour's worth of mention done. Oh, dear, 
dearie me. So yes, yeah, this, this is my YouTube channel as well. 58 North, Astronomy from the Shed. I've had a YouTube channel for, oh, I don't know, a couple of years since I really started. Well, I've been doing astrophotography for longer than a couple of years, but I thought I'll start putting it on YouTube. And uh, I sort of changed the name just not that long ago. I used to call myself Sutherland Skies, since I live up in Sutherland. In the, the northwest Sutherland up in the highlands of Scotland but uh, there's another Sutherland skies apparently there's a place in South Africa called Sutherland that's quite famous for uh, scientific telescopes and whatnot and uh, well, they've been on YouTube a lot longer than me although there's hardly any videos from them but still Whenever you type in Sutherland Skies, it always comes up with someone else rather than me, so I thought, right, I'll change my name. So, 58 North it is, since that is my latitude. And, uh, yeah. So that's my YouTube channel. There's not an awful lot on it now. Uh, I've not really done much this year at all because the weather has been so bad but I did upload one video just last week I think uh, imaging the Horsehead Nebula and I think I've got another video sort of another full length video these are full length videos another full length one imaging oh what was the other one I can't remember it was either the east or the west full nebula I can't even remember now which one it was but uh, not really edited down in any way these videos I've just been sort of putting the full thing out there um, a wee bit of editing at the end just to include the, the final processed image uh, but apart from that I've really just been leaving it uncut just uh, as it is I don't know if I'll do the same with this one because it's been a bit I don't know I'll play it back and see how it looks I might just put it all out at the end of the day if people want to watch an hour or two hours or three hours or four hours or me just sitting in the shed and it's your choice but uh, I've never been sort of big on editing videos I say just a little bit here and there for a bit of information to put in and I say the final image at the end but it is about it so yeah That is my YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully next, well, this, this year, this winter, hopefully if the weather's kind, I can get out a lot more and do a lot more imaging and subsequently just film it all and uh, yeah, hopefully get a few more YouTube videos out as well. If anyone's remotely interested, it shall be there. How are we getting on? Two more subframes to go and I think I'm going to call it quits at that. I'll very quickly get packed up and uh, get off to bed I think. And uh, yeah, that bit's been good. I'm quite happy to at least I've got to get a picture of something tonight. Because when it's so close to summer I was half thinking about just packing the scope away, taking out the observatory because I say I've still got a lot of inside work to do as well and give it all a paint and whatnot so I was beginning to think there's going to be no more imaging left until the end of summer so I was quite happy to get a wee clear sky tonight so this is this could possibly be the last time the scope will be out until, until winter Hello so, hello, you coming up? You coming? You coming? No? It's going to make a noise. Are you? Yeah. It's going to make a noise. Yeah. 
So yes, could be the last day, uh, the last picture until, until this coming winter, or autumn, should I say, anyway. We shall see. But yeah, I really need to get the scope out and uh, get working on the inside of the observatory, get all the wee bits, not, odds and ends finished. Yes. Right, nearly there. That cat makes some noise out there. Guidance for every sub that goes to high as well. Clear. It was absolutely fine for long enough, unless the sky's taking a turn for the worse. And there's a cat jumping all over the scope. Who knows? I don't think this is going to be one of my best images, to be honest. I really don't think it is. <laughs> Slightly hazy sky to start with. A satellite going through nearly every second sub exposure. It's like really. Why is it stopped? And this uh, is that us finished. Five out of five. Yep. That's us done. Wasn't even paying attention. Right, 
I need to get to bed. Let's get the camera warmed up. Get everything shut down and uh, I shall pack up. Well, thanks for joining me. It's been a bit of a shorter night than I was hoping for, but I really don't feel the best. And uh, yeah, it's really late already. I only really started imaging just the back of 11 after a few problems, a few issues. But I shall process this tomorrow the best I can and uh, stick a wee video together, put the final image on the end. So I think I shall say good night and clear skies and yeah, see you again soon or <coughs> after the summer. So anyway, this is John from 58 North for more astronomy from the shed. I shall see you again soon. Bye for now. Goodbye.